Okay, hi everyone. Welcome back. So, I'm going to talk about market trends of artificial intelligence. Um, adding on to the previous discussion under the SWOT analysis, everybody believes that artificial intelligence will be a disruptive force, not only across every industry, but sector, uh, sorry, not, every, not in every industry and sector, but for society as a whole. And machine working hours is forecast to increase at least 10% across most work tasks and activities. Um, advanced IT skills and programming will see growth in terms of job opportunities. Basic physical and cognitive skills like data entry and processing skills will decline. With the growth of uh, AI integration, there is a forecast in demand in uh, AI specific chips. There's also CMOS, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor, which are image sensors that anticipate to be high in demand. And it is important means to get image data for AI applications. So moving on, we have geopolitics for AI. So um, both the United States and China are ranked as top few countries that invest heavily and leading the industry of AI. Um, however, China is making a strong push for the global leader in the technology market. Um, there, are also, there are distinctions in the government governance between China and US. China has four out of five AI startups with funding of more than US 1 billion. Um, whereas in the United States, the number of startups venturing into this industry is roughly 3.5 times higher than in China. Um, this proves that the United States is more innovative for AI, while China focuses more on the concentration in bigger AI companies. As, as we know, Singapore is leading the AI experimentation in the region. Um, other countries are also shifting into such initiatives and these AI adoptions um, require sharper business cases, more robust data ecosystems, and concerted talent. So um, Singapore, Malaysia, and Vietnam ranks the top three countries in terms of AI adoption. Um, industries like telecom, financial services, media entertainment, retail, and healthcare are the most common AI integration across the region. So moving on to the next slide, we'll, I will pause on the time to Kai Jin. All right, thanks. Okay, so um, for what I've covered during the research itself is actually cloud computing. Uh, currently, it's actually the leading in terms of the growth rate at 18% comparatively to their counterpart 70% from the AI and 14.9% from Internet of Things itself. So the reason for this is also because of the advancement in the tech in all fields there's an actually an increase in demand for servers, database, and storage itself. So this is actually to aid in terms of the networking uh, analytics and the intelligence over the internet uh, at, a faster, at a faster speed with much more flexibility itself. So cloud is actually, um, actually they accounts to more than a third of the IT spending worldwide. And due to the pandemic itself, many businesses are actually forced to integrate work over the cloud at this point of time. So from the graph itself, we do uh, we can we are able to see in terms of the spending and the uh, and the forecasts uh, in the near future itself, and they are here to stay in the sense lah. So for the macro outlook itself, uh, looking to their perspective is uh, the three leading players currently in the cloud sector is actually AWS followed by Microsoft then Google. Uh, yeah. So across the different industry itself, it's actually reported that 58% of firms outside use a combination of these three different uh, cloud providers. And per mention, adoption rates, you know, given the current pandemic situation, have actually accelerated the reliance of cloud to ensure, you know, smooth transition within the workspace. APEC Asia Pacific is the current fastest growing, you know, cloud market due to the explosion of um, Internet of Things devices combined with the portability of computing power and the AI-driven tools lah, across different sectors itself. So it's also actually forecast that Asia Pacific will actually hit up to a $76 billion uh, by 2023 in terms of annual spending itself. Near home, uh, Singapore cloud market is actually set to reach up to a US $3.5 billion by 2023 itself. Lah. So given the infrastructure and political stability, 
we pose as an attractive destination, you know, for big techs to actually inv- wanting to invest into uh, Singapore in terms of like, setting up their data centers here. Lah. So this number itself actually accounts up to 0.4% of our GDP. Not a, not a small sum itself uh, to, to, to look at. Uh, secondly, you know, stats from uh, Economic Development Board itself uh, actually shows that 80 out of 100 top tech firms have actually uh, placed their operation base in Singapore. And this number is still growing at, uh, and it's still increasing lah, as their investment uh, over in Singapore increased as well. So the other reasons uh, for our attractiveness is actually the successful, successful Mi 22 bilateral and regional free trade agreements. Lah. Additionally, Singapore has actually signed two major free trade agreements with the European Union and the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans PAC partnership, which actually promote high standard of digital trade. So, of course, you know, given the, the I would say, the, the pros and cons, uh, we, have, we are looking at the cons at this point of time. Uh, it's always the two sides to the same coin. Uh, I've actually summed me up to three, I would say, three major uh, areas whereby, um, I would say, businesses or firms are actually looking at. Transparency is the first. And it's got to do with the identity theft, uh, reduced visibility control, as well as the stolen credentials. Whereas for regulatory, it's more towards rules and policies and compliance violations. The last one would be security whereby it might be due to data breaches, you know, malware infections, or incomplete data deletion. So despite this, you know, it actually is able to provide opportunities for service providers out there, you know, with an opportunity to innovate in and improve in this particular area. So what I'm trying to say that is that um, whichever service provider is able to, I would say, overcome, you know, uh, these areas in this aspect is actually able to lead uh, this, this market as a leading player in this sense. So right now I'm just going to show if you I uh, will just show you guys uh, what the report is all about and what we have actually gone through. Um, so yeah, so they see this is the report that we have done on 29th of uh, August itself, one of the program that we actually uh, went for. So we are able to I would say identify the entire industry, have an overview uh, of like what's going on and stuff like that, and a little bit forecast to see what's going to happen in the future and their developments and stuff. Then followed by the research that Nick has done, which is got to do with artificial intelligence and their particular sector itself and how are they faring in a sense. And followed by my cloud computing itself. Yeah, we talk about the micro, macro, you know, relations, geography and everything. Before we actually dive, uh, I would say, deeper into the competitive uh, matrix and stuff like that, where we do a simple comparison uh, across, I would say, three different companies such as like Alphabet, Amazon and Alibaba. Lah. We do a SWOT, a SWOT analysis about them as well as a simple, I would say, numbers comparison, followed by a summary. So yeah, I'm just going to move on right now. So to sum it all up, you know, like, like I mentioned, like these are on the only two sectors within the tech industry itself. So um, right now, I'm just going to sum, without, sum, uh, sum it up with, I would say, a little bit of history lesson with regards to the tech industry. So, yeah, back in 1999, 3D bioprinting has actually, is, is already there already, you know, it's, it's, it, it exists there, you know, so, uh, people are able to print uh, actual bladder and successfully implant into a human. And in 01, we are able to see the commercial launch of 3G itself, which is, uh, I think back then, that's where we start to use internet on our phone and stuff like that. Cloud computing has actually existed back in 1960s, but only, I would say, properly seen in 2006 or incorporated into the business uh, day-to-day operation in 2006. 2007, we start to see the evolution of AI, whereby there's a co-integration between humans and, uh, and, and devices itself. Bitcoin started in 2009, followed by their blockchain in 2011. And genomics in 2009, even though it's dated back in 1871, however, given the current uh, limitation of technology itself, uh, they, there isn't much progression. Or at least there is progression, but not, at, not, at how, not as fast as what we are seeing in the 21st century itself. Uh, 2014, Tesla uh, actually launched their driverless car. Um, it, even though the first automated, first autonomous car was built in uh, 1961, uh, it's actually the early uh, version of artificial intelligence. 2015, we start to see, uh, I mean, SpaceX has actually successfully landed their Falcon 9 back on the Earth. And 2016, we are able to see Oculus Rift, which is what we know as virtual reality. Lah. And 2019, we start to, uh, we, are, we are being introduced to 5G network itself. And as Singapore itself, uh, I would say we are actually adopting uh, 5G at a very healthy rate itself. So do look forward to that. 
So without further ado, I actually would like to thank you guys for the time uh, for spending, um, I would say, about 10 minutes or so to listen to this. I hope it's informative. Um, if you like to check out the rest of our videos, uh, the YouTube channel is KJ Investment. My, this is my Instagram handle. And if you like to you know, answer any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the YouTube video or you know, uh, drop me a DM uh, on my Instagram. Other than that, the QR code is actually to our Telegram group whereby we post, uh, I would say, daily news or financial related articles. Uh, or general, if let's say you all have any uh, things that you want to talk about, uh, it's a platform for open discussion where everyone is there to learn, no right or wrong. Uh, everyone is free to join as well. Uh, at the very same time, if you guys are interested with the report I shared earlier, um, do do sub do subscribe to my YouTube, drop a like, then after that, join the Telegram group. Then from there, you can DM me, then that's where I can send you the report itself. Without further ado, uh, lastly, I would like to thank you guys for your time again. And yeah, have a great evening. Goodbye.